I'm Sylvia Spiva, Cisco Developer Community Manager here in the DevNet Zone at Cisco Live Europe, and I've got my friends Sasha and Leon. Hi guys, this is Sasha Giese from SolarWinds, and I'm one of the head geeks, and here's another one. Yes, I'm the other head geek. My name is Leon Adato, and I also work at SolarWinds, and I'm also a head geek. Wow. A murder of crows? No, wait, what were we saying? We're a chaos of geeks. It's a chaos of geeks. A chaos of geeks. Okay, well, let's ask this chaos of geeks from a bunch of nerds here at DevNet. Tell us about all the years you've been coming to the DevNet Zone and what you think about it so far. So I've been coming here for about four years now, and um, when I first got here, it was just like a little corner of Cisco Live. There wasn't much to it. And I thought, oh, that's, that's interesting. They're doing a little programming kind of stuff. I don't know why they would program. It's networking, but whatever. And then as the years went on, what I noticed was that, first of all, Cisco was really committed to this kind of work, but also uh, committed to helping IT pros transition or pivot from their pure networking route and switch into this idea of automation. And the other thing is the emphasis on real world activities, that this isn't some esoteric, like you're going to be a, a full stack developer and you're going to make web, app. no, not, none of that. It's going to take the same tasks that you're used to doing on your network gear and just automate them so that you can focus your time on the more complicated things. Um, so And building good coding habits and things that, that if you were self-taught, you might do things in a really bad way. Cisco's committed to helping people avoid those hurdles. So that's what I've seen over the last few years, and it's huge now. That's the other thing is that the amount of floor space that's been devoted to this has gotten significantly larger year over year over year. It, it is actually. I remember a few years ago there was like the CCIE lab over there and tons of other stuff. Um, but now it's the whole hall here, the first hall. And it's actually pretty cool because you can play with real world scenarios, which you probably won't do at work because, well, it has to work, right? <laughs> so you, you, you can just play around here, which is pretty cool. I like that. You can test in production. It's okay. Yes, and then you cry and run away, right? Uh -huh. So yeah. Well, I'm glad that you had a tour there of the co-creations and the sandbox. What did you like best? Um, actually, I, I like the robot arm, to be honest, the moving <laughs> robot arm. You, you have to see this, right? Um, this, is, this is quite cool. No, it's, it's really, there's so much to do. This, I really like it over here. So. Yeah, so my favorite area, you know, my favorite area is actually the coffee shop over there. That was, ah, right. the yeah. coffee is really important yeah. to me. Um, it, it's fun to watch people learning the skill. I actually stand in the back of the coding, uh, the coding camps and just watch people. And you see people of all ages, that's the other thing. You have a, a maybe a preconceived notion of who's going to be willing to take their hard-won network knowledge and just throw it all away. And you see graybeards sitting there without a problem. These are not people who, you know, are looking, you know, crying into their drink and, you know, worrying about where their next paycheck is coming from. They are growing their skills and they are totally good with it. Well, speaking of growing your skills, I hope you both have heard about the DevNet certifications by now. So, um, you also heard about the partner specialization, which means that partners who have s several people, a certain number of people who have the DevNet certifications will be specially recognized by DevNet. How do you make the time to study and to get new skills, and what do you recommend to people? Well, it's, look, we are, we are geeks, so we are interested in technology, okay? And um, there are so many flavors in technology, and you need to be, uh, you need to keep up to date, okay? And when you're interested in a topic, you automatically are more willing to spend time to look into something, okay? And as I'm German, I try to be efficient, so if I spend, uh, spend time in something, I usually look if there's a way to certify myself, because it's like a two birds, one stone thing, okay? So um, you dig into a topic, you learn something about it, and you can prove that you have at least a basic understanding. That, that, that's what I like. Right? Um, one of the things I've talked about before is, is people overlook the power of five minutes, that you can learn a lot in just taking five minutes of your time and uh, you know, reading through half a page or going through an example or whatever. But it does require you be organized, sort of the, back to the German thing, being efficient, that the PDF or the book has to be open and ready on your desk so that when you're waiting on hold or you're waiting for your code to compile or your, you know, whatever it is, that you have those five minutes because we have actually a lot of empty five minutes moments waiting in a doctor's office that you could really use um, and even if you're learning just a page a day it adds up and the other thing is to find a project that means something to you I think a lot of times when IT pros are chasing new knowledge they don't know what the technology is about they don't understand the technique they're learning and they have no reason why you would possibly want to do it and that's a deadly combination that if you know if you have a pet project and it doesn't matter if it's really useful it could be your Dungeons and Dragons uh, lookup guide or it could be your uh, 
pasta recipe book, or it could be, you know, whatever you want. But then you have knowledge of the domain, and you think, oh, this is something I could use for myself. Now, on a network side, it could be that thing that you end up doing 10 times a week. That's the perfect thing to learn to automate. If you don't do it, you still know how to do it. You can still do the work, but if you do do it, you've just saved yourself all that time, and that becomes more meaningful to you and, and becomes a good example to practice around. So it, is, um, it is basically important that you choose your own level of depth. Do you really want to dig into a topic which you're not so interested in, or is it okay if you just get a superficial understanding of what it does, right? That is sometimes quite often enough. That's a really good point. And you've both talked about automation and efficiencies. Now, something that we've talked a lot about here in the DevNet Zone this week is careers. People living longer, um, more things getting automated, and people having different careers. Like maybe someone who lives to be 100 will have five careers. I feel like I'm about to start my third. How do you feel about the work that you're doing now and where your journey has taken you and where you want to go in the future? Hmm. Do we know where we end in the future? I don't know. Um, there's so many interesting things we can do and we can choose from, okay? So um, I think we are all humans. We evolve, okay? And we can't, in particular in IT, we can't um, do the same job for 20, 30 years over again, okay? It gets a little bit boring if you would do this. So you automatically look for new challenges, but um, it's important that you're not forced into a field you are really not interested in, okay? And um, for the traditional network engineer, automation in the early days might be like, ooh, um, a, a, a dangerous topic, okay? Um, and, but there's no need to dig into um, Perl in one day or whatever it is, right? So you can do a little bit of snippets and just find um, time to optimize your day, the five minutes, as, as Leon just mentioned it. Right, and I also think that, so I've been doing IT for 30 years. Um, I'm a certified old person now, and uh, my, right. And I, I think that, you know, I mean, I know my career has moved from the training classroom to desktop support, to server support, to network support, to monitoring now, which is what I focus on. So even as we're doing the same thing, you're not doing the same thing. The technology changes around you. So there's really no difference between that and adding coding to your resume, adding that skill. And to your point, you can decide to learn a little bit of it, and that's where you stop. I, I know enough to do what I need to do. That opens up new avenues to me, whether at my same company or at a different company, to do more of it, to grow. I think even people who are lifelong programmers realize they multiple languages, multiple imitations, front end, back end, you know, uh, pure automation. I think there's different ways to express the skills that we have. And finally, um, for people who might be at the, you know, more venerable end of the spectrum, perhaps, you know, there's a, a preconceived notion that, oh, well, you know, old dog, new tricks, all of that. We've seen so much, we've seen so much change around us that we understand the context of a new technique better than somebody who's new on the scene. You know, people are talking about containers, containers are all, I call them LPARs and they run on AIX machines and I remember them because it's really not that much different. So I have an easier time assimilating that new knowledge because I have a framework, even if it's not an exact match, to see. And I think people overlook that point also is, you know, you can use your old experiences to dovetail or pivot into this new whatever it is. Well, thank you both so much for visiting the DevNet Zone, and we'll hope to see you next year. I think we're going to Amsterdam, so let's see how that works. I really wish we were going back to Berlin, but maybe I shouldn't have said that. Anyway, thanks for visiting. Bye.